know, the, an indigenous people's history of the United States, a brilliant book. You know, when did you, you know, decide that you wanted to write this book? Because this book um, had to have taken quite a bit of time to, to, to compile all of that research and, and to put it so eloquently together. Uh, you know, when did it all really, like, you know, take place for you in your life that you decided you wanted to write this book? Well, I, I, I did not decide I wanted to write that book. I probably never would have um, the thought of writing such a book um, because I would have thought it was a crazy idea to be able to do it. But yeah. I was invited. I was asked to write it uh, by Beacon Press. Um, they had published um, Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States in yes. 1980. Great book. And it's a great book, and, and Howard is a friend of mine. So when they had dis decided to do this series called Revisioning American History, uh, they talked to him about it, um, get some ideas, and he suggested that they ask me to write the oh, Indigenous wow. People's volume. And so one day I get a phone call and asked if I would do this. And I said, oh, absolutely. This is, of course, you know, this is <laughs> easy. I can knock that off in a year. <laughs> that, was in, that was in 2007. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> seven About years seven later. years. That's a lucky number. That's a good number, seven. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was, it was very hard to... You know, because we wanted it to be, the idea is it would be very readable, very accessible, but not dumbed down, which takes, you know, a, a really good writing, uh, which is difficult. I mean, I, I am a writer, but this, this went far beyond my capabilities, I felt, um, in trying to um, tell, a, tell a story that had, you know, a cohesiveness to it, but wasn't simplified and dealt really, really deeply and had, um, you know, ha had a theme. So I really had to figure out what I thought. I'd been writing about aspects of this, like about the Sioux Treaty, about the uh, colonial land tenure in New Mexico, yeah. about, um, you know, international law and how it applies a lot of things about law. Um, and... Uh, so I dealt with, you know, different aspects, and I, of course, had taught for many years, uh, uh, 30 years, of Native American studies, introduction to Native American studies, and and I had a doctorate in, in, in history as well. So I had, you know, I had um, all of these elements, but just, um, just putting them all together, it was really like taking, a, a, you know, one of those... Uh, picture puzzles that really advanced where it has tiny little pieces and they all look alike. Yeah, yeah. And you do have the picture, you know, you have that picture, you know what you're supposed to reach, but, you know, how do you put all those pieces together? That's what it felt like is putting pieces of a puzzle together. Oh, Roxanne, that's so cool. Now, I, I again, I'm somebody who loves history, who studies history, which is why I am so happy that you wrote this book. Roxanne Dunbar-Ortiz, let me tell you, somebody who's read works by Foner, Zinn, uh, you know, and, you know, Brinkley and, and beyond, uh, Chomsky, and, you know, we we had Noam on the show actually, you know, so that was really yeah. cool. Um, you know, really, you are spoken in the same breath of all of these greats, and it's an honor for us, ma'am. I can't even tell you. I just, can I just ask you, how was Howard Zinn as a person? You know, oh. that's that's really cool. Yeah, you know, he passed away three years ago. He's a lovely person. Uh, he lived on, you know, we lived on a different coast, but I I saw him, you know, quite occasionally and um he he was just and i i guess i first met him back in the 1970s so he was he's just an amazing person um probably you know just one of the most perfect people you could imagine just such a, a gracious and generous and non-egotistic but noam chomsky is the same way you know i mean they're, they're really 
and amazing. And I considered them both mentors, you know, uh, since I was quite young. I knew Noam Shamsi, um 1969, you know, when I was uh, being a wild-eyed radical and feminist. That's awesome. Oh, Roxanne, can you hear me? Yes. So sorry. You know what's so weird? I felt, I've heard, have you heard a faint uh, phone line cutting in every once in a while on this yes, call? Yes, I didn't know if it was there or what. Okay, no, I heard that also. Um, so I apologize about that. Probably just a, a line, like a phone line, just whatever it is. Feel free if you want to call right back, you know, if you want to see if that'll okay. just like stop it from happening. Okay. You cool, want me to yeah. Just give a call right back. Awesome, awesome. Okay. I'll Thanks, Rox. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.